Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of IIFT Insights, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of the IIFT examination. Today, we are dealing with logical reasoning, so we'll be looking at a question and how to solve it effectively. So let's start off with today's question. It's again from quantitative reasoning. Directions for questions 1 to 6. A, B, C, D, and E are five different integers. When written in the ascending order of values, the difference between any two adjacent integers is 4. D is the greatest and A is the least. B is greater than E but less than C. The sum of the integers is equal to E. So let's look at the questions first, shall we? The first question is to find the value of A. Second question is to find the sum of A and B. Third question is the greatest number has the value. And the fourth question is to find the sum of the integers. And the fifth question is to find the product of the integers. And the last question is the positive difference between the lowest and highest integers. So these are our questions based on the directions given here. So, as you've seen in the options, it is clear that we're dealing with both negative and positive integers. So let's look at each of the statement and gain information from them. So if we look at the first statement, it says that A, B, C, D, and E are five different integers. So we know the placeholders for the integers. These are A, B, C, D, and E. Next, let's look at the second statement. The second statement says that when written in the ascending order of values, the difference between any two adjacent integers is 4. So when you write this in the ascending order of values and you get it and you get the difference as 4 between any two adjacent integers, this essentially means that these numbers a, b, c, d and e are in arithmetic progression. We also know the common difference of the of that arithmetic progression which is equal to 4. So this is what the second statement tells us. The third statement says that D is the greatest and A is the least. So that means if you have five of these integers placed together in descending order, then you'll see that D will come first because it's the greatest number and A will come last because it's the least number. Now in the fourth statement, fourth statement it says that B is greater than E but less than C. So basically it shows us the order between D and A. Now since in the second question they asked, they said that any two adjacent integers, the difference being 4 in the ascending order, let's write the same integers in the ascending order this time. So when it comes to the ascending order, A comes first, and since B is greater than E, so E comes next, then B, and since B is less than C, that comes after B, and then the greatest number, which in this case is D. So now we know the order of the integers when placed in ascending and descending order. Now let's look at the fifth statement. The fifth statement says the sum of the integers is equal to E. sum of integers equals to e. Now basically the sum of integers means adding all the integers together. Now for that value to be equal to e, it means that the value of a plus b plus c plus d has to be equal to zero. So if the value of a if the value of the sums of a, b, c, and d are equal to zero, 
and the sum of the total number of integers would be equal to e. So, this is what we've got from the statements so far. But how do we start solving the questions here? The first question states the value of a is. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but question 1 is also a clue when you take it with the statements. If you look at the third statement, it says that d is the greatest and a the least. So basically, we can take the least number here, which is option b minus 9, and that would give us the entire series. So option b minus 9 is the right option because it's the least number given. Option D doesn't make sense because we know that option B is correct. Now, from here, we know that these numbers are an arithmetic progression with the common difference 4. So, let's write down the numbers here. We now know that A is equal to minus 9. The next number would be E and its, num its value will be minus 5 because f there is a difference of 4 between them. Then we have the number b, which would be equal to minus 1. Again, a difference of 4. The number c would be equal to 3, difference of 4. And then the greatest number here would be the number d, which would have a value of 7. So now we know all of our values. Now, the last statement says that the sum of integers is equal to e, so this is also the sum of integers. a is the least number, and d is the greatest number. Now, since they say e is the sum of integers, we need to verify it. So if we do that, minus 9 plus minus 1 plus 3 plus 7. 3 plus 7 gives you 10. Minus 9 plus minus 1 gives you minus 10, which, again, when you add that with 10, you get 0. So 0 minus 5 is equal to minus 5, which is the sum of the integers, according to the statement. So I think we've managed to exhaust all of the clues given in the direction side. Now let's look at question number 2, the sum of a and b. So we've done that here, minus 9 is a, minus 1 is b. So minus 9 minus 1 is equal to minus 10. So therefore, option a minus 10 turns out to be the right option. Option, option c is incorrect because it's positive, option b is incorrect because the value is different, and option d is incorrect because we know that a is the right answer. Now let's move on to question number 3. The greatest number has the value. So according to the third statement, D is the greatest value. And if you look at our value sheet, you can see that the greatest number is equal to number 7. So therefore, D is equal to 7. That means option D, 7 is the right option. Option B is equal to minus 5 which is very low, option A9 is incorrect, and option C3 is also incorrect. The right answer is option D7. Now, question number four. The sum of the integers. So here it's given option A25, option B minus 6, option C minus 15, option D none of these. Now, according to statement number five, the sum of the integers is equal to the integer E. The value of integer e is minus 5, so therefore, as you can see, the right answer turns out to be option d, none of these. a, b, and c are incorrect because they are not numerically equal to minus 5, which is the value of e, which is said in the question as the sum of the integers. So therefore, Minus 5 is the actual value for the sum of the integers, so option D, none of these, is the right option. Now, question number 5, the product of the integers. 
So basically, that's a times b times c times d times e. So the value of a is minus 9, the value of b is minus 1, the value of c is 3, the value of d is 7, and the value of e is minus 5. So minus 9 times minus 1 times 3 times 7 times minus 5. Now let's keep this minus 1 aside. So among the options, you have option A minus 9, 4, 5, option B, 9, 4, 5, and option C, 3, 1, 5, and option D is none of these. So without even multiplying, we can actually get closer to the answer. Now if you look at the numbers here, you can see that there are three negative numbers. Now in multiplication, if you have two negative numbers multiplied together, they multiply to form positive. Negative multiplied by negative is positive. However, positive multiplied by negative is equal to negative. So since there are three, so that since there are an odd number of negative numbers, the product would still be an odd number. I mean, the product would still be a negative number. So that means options B and C are incorrect because both of these are positive, whereas the actual product is negative. So now that we've done that, let's multiply the values. 7 times 3 gives you 21. Minus 9 times minus 5 would give you a positive, that for, that's 45. So all we have to do is multiply 45 with 21, and then put a minus sign to it, and that will give you the product of the integers. 5 times 1 gives you 5, 4 times 1 is 4, 5 2 is a 10, 4 2 is a 8, plus 1 gives you 9. So what we get is 945. 945 times b, which is minus 1, gives you negative 945. So the right answer turns out to be option A, minus 945. Option D, again, is incorrect here because we have calculated to get option A, minus 945, as the product of the integers. So option A is the right option. Now this is the final question for today. What's the positive difference between the lowest and the highest integers? Now, why do they call it positive difference? Because um, basically we're doing subtraction and one of the numbers here is negative. So basically what we're doing is D minus A because D is the greatest and A is the least. So the value of d is 7, the value of a is minus 9. So when you do d minus a, you get 7 minus of minus 9, which is equal to 7 plus 9, which is equal to 16. So basically, it's finding out how many places is 7 different from minus 9. And the value is option c, 16. If you were to take option b, 6, then it would be, then the value of d, I mean, the value of a would be 1, so that's incorrect. And if you take option a, 8, then the value of a would be minus 1, which is again incorrect. Option d, none of these is incorrect because we found out that option c, 16, is the right answer. We did that by subtracting a from d, and since a is negative and we're doing subtraction, we get a positive difference of 16. So option c is the right option. Now that concludes this episode of IIFT Insights. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates from IIFT or any other examinations, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video and set it to all. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.